Stampers. My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. I'm so glad you could join me today. Um, today I have a, a card for you where I'm combining a couple of different things. I'm using the hydrangea paper. I'm using the butterfly brilliance uh, dies and I'm using the happy thoughts um, sentiments. So uh, I've got a combination of things here that I think you're going to enjoy. Let's just get started. Here is my card. So what I have done is I've used from the butterfly brilliance, I made what I thought looked a bit like a monarch butterfly. Those are those ones with the beautiful orange and black. So um, I used the die to cut out both the butterfly itself and all of those butterflies are spread out. And I wanted this one to be on its side. So I'll show you exactly what I did to get this. And I don't know if you can see this, but it is on here in such a way that this upper level of the butterfly is raised. Then this hydrangea paper, um, and there's a lot of beautiful paper in this. There's this large bloom paper with a green background. This kind of a rose color, and I'll have to look and see what the coordinating colors, with a purple in the back. Then we have this beautiful paper that has little bouquets of hydrangeas in three different colors. That is beautiful stuff. It's the first time I've played with this suite. And then it's got a combination of the blue and purple in the back. Then um, these papers, which have just the blues and the purples, and that has that sweet little floral background. Then there is this one, which is similar to this, except it's just completely full. Uh, and the blooms look to me to be a tiny bit smaller. Then, um, let's see. Then there is this paper. And this is the paper I used. I'll pull it out so you can see it. And what I did was I cut this in four inch strips so that I could get six cards out of each sheet. You get two in the package so it'll make 12 cards the way I've got it set up. And I just cut these into four inch strips by five and a quarter. And I'll show you what else you need to make this card. So I used a Whisper White base. Let me just pull out my little parts and pieces here. I used a Whisper White base that is eight and a half by five and a half scored and folded at four and a quarter. And we're gonna work a little bit with the scoring and folding this time. I had a question and I'm not sure I answered it uh, adequately. Uh, a lady who writes to me and her name is, and I'm probably gonna murder this, Ineke, I-N-E-K-E, -E, has written me about uh, folding and scoring using your trimmer and I answered her questions and she's responded and so I thought I would just do a demonstration of exactly how I do this because I'm very fussy. I want my cards to be perfect. I don't want them to be longer on one end than the other and um, I gave her an answer. I'm not sure it was what I meant to say. Anyway, we'll, we'll take a look at doing that. Then I have this piece of hydrangea paper that is going to go on the front. I have my butterfly die cut with its backing and I did the backing in pumpkin pie. So you need a, scrub, a scrap of pumpkin pie and a scrap of black to cut your butterfly out. And I'll show you how I got this little guy to look like that. Then I have a piece of seaside spray here for the inside of the card. And here is the inside. And I put the seaside spray and then white 
3 and 3 quarters by 5 in here. And then I stamped, I don't know if you've seen this stamp set, but it is so much fun. It's the host, one of the host stamps, it might be the only host stamp, for the January to June mini catalog. And it is so cool. It's got a tiny hydrangea, it's got a dragonfly, it's got a seashell, and it's got this floral motif, which looks like the art gallery floral. It's got this set of leaves, tiny leaves, little bubbles, and this little leaf pattern here. So it kind of goes, and it's called Sweet Sampler, and it's absolutely right. It will go with three or four of those different um, stamp sets. And so I use this little stamp here for the inside of my card to put a small hydrangea. And then uh, I use the Happy Thoughts stamp set. And this is another one that's just great fun. Um, the stamps are pretty good size though. So, um, there's a nice big happy birthday, thinking of you, thank you, congratulations. The scripts are nice. This one is just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way. So I'm calling this card Happy Thoughts, Butterflies, and Hydrangeas. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do here. So you need a scrap of the pumpkin pie and a scrap of the black to cut out your butterflies. And then I cut this little tiny butterfly in there. And that is this stamp set. So I used the biggest butterfly here. And then I used the outline. Let me just take this thing off of here and I can show you. So there is the little butterfly that I used in black on the inside. This butterfly, which I think looks most like the monarch. And then I just put my little scrap of pumpkin pie underneath this part of the outline die here to cut out that piece. And you can get real tricky about how big the piece of paper is that you're using. You might be able to get away with a much smaller piece of paper. There we go. And just cut out that piece. Anyway, that is what I'm using on this card. All right. So the very first thing we need to do is add here. Oh, I want to do the uh, illustration on the scoring. So I'm going to bring my trimmer out. Of I'm going to bring a piece out of the Thick Whisper White. Part of the problem with scoring and folding is that this channel in here and your scoring blade, while they look like they're perfectly proportioned, um, don't always um, give you an exact score. Nothing does. So let me make that clear. So what I do is I set my paper in here at four and a quarter, and I'm very precise. Uh, I look here to where my paper is relative to that mark. Can you see that? Let me bring this down a little bit here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So four and a quarter. And if I set my paper right on that four and a quarter line, I can just see the hint of the black mark on the outside. And I make sure that that is exactly the same all the way down the page. I don't necessarily rely that this is cut square. I want to make absolutely sure that the way it looks at the top is the way it looks at the bottom. Then, once I've got that set the way I want it, then I take my score tool and I score with pretty good pressure three or four times. All right, now then, that is scored. Then I turn it to this side and that's five and a half inches is exactly half and it lines up with this little line on this ruler right down here. So again, I'm setting it down so that it's right on the five and a half mark and it's set at that five and a half mark down here. So I know that my paper is going to be cut straight. Now I have my 
two pieces that are scored. Now, I don't put away my trimmer at that point because this is what I do to make sure that my score lines come out right. So, Nikki, I hope this helps you. We're going to fold this. This is the valley part of the score here. That is where we scored down, and we're going to fold it, but not all the way. This has a stop on it on this end, and I'm going to take that bottom piece, and I'm going to push it up against there, and then I'm going to take this top piece, and I'm also going to push it there and make sure that those pieces are absolutely secure against this end of my trimmer. Then I take my bone folder and I then uh, burnish my fold. And I do this with every single card. And you can see there that my score and fold are exactly right. And if you forget to put it up against this, you're going to get some that are a little bit off, but you can correct them because that score channel is actually pretty wide. So if you've scored one improperly, you can always put it back in here, marry up these two edges, make sure you've got it exactly right, and hold it down hard and rescore. It's going to be somewhat forgiving in that that score channel is wide so that you can correct without damaging your card. So again, cutting and scoring and then using whatever you can. It can be done up here. It can be done here on the side. I find the side works pretty well. And then I go ahead and burnish my score um, on that um, on my paper. And this is using the thick Whisper White. And what I would do different if I was using a lighter weight card is I wouldn't go up and down the score mark quite so many times. This paper can handle it because it's fairly thick, pretty substantial. And so you want to be a little lighter touch if your paper is just a little bit lighter um, than the, than the uh, thick Whisper White. So that's that part. All right, and I hope that answers any questions that I left lingering. <laughs> okay, so this piece is going to go right on here. And actually, we have some stamping to do because we want the stamping, and I'm stamping right on the designer series paper. And in order to get the image that I want, I set up my Stamparatus. So I have my Happy Thoughts stamp loaded on my Stamparatus, and I have some of that sticky grid paper on the bottom of my thing so I don't have to use my um, uh, magnets. And then I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to put something underneath here to support this while I ink up my stamp. It's a big stamp, and I just don't want to take the chance that it's not going to be perfect and then I'm going to want to stamp it again, and I can't. So I'm going to put my happy thoughts right down here on my piece of designer series paper. And it looks pretty good, but I want a really crisp black uh, stamp. So I'm going to ink it up and do it a second time. And there we go. That is just perfect. All right. Now then, I can just pick up my hydrangea paper off of the sticky grid paper. And I think I talked about that in another video. That sticky grid paper is a Sizzix product. And it comes in a package. Let's see. That is... Let's grab one. It is sticky grid sheets, Sizzix. I think I paid five or six dollars for this, and it comes with five sheets. I'm pretty sure it's five sheets total. Yes, five sheets that are whatever size this is. This is eight and a half by 
about six, maybe a little bit wider than six. And so you have plenty of room to, um, and, and I just, as you see here, put a strip at the top and a strip at the bottom, and that's enough to grab your paper and hold it so you don't have to use a ton of this stuff to use on your grid paper. And I also use one of these right up against the edge on my foam mat for when I'm doing photopolymers in here. And that way my paper can stick down to the sticky. And, and you can stick down papers three, four, five times before you have to change out your paper. And with this one, I, I've learned since then, you don't really have to put down the whole strip. I could do what I did on this, and that is put two small strips down and be perfectly fine. Okay, so let me move that out of the way. And let's go ahead and take our base here and adhere our designer series paper to the front of our card. So there we go. And we're going to set this down and put it in place so there is a similar margin all the way around. And you just don't settle it down until you're pretty sure you've got it on straight. The other thing to do would be to use Tombow so you'd have enough room, time to kind of wiggle things around. But there we go. That's now on there. Very good. Now, on to what I did with the butterfly. So, I know that I have trouble cutting things straight, but I took a chance <laughs> and just used my snips since this body is so short. And I put the snips down here at the bottom of the body and came right up to the top and split it so I had an antennae on either side. And I did the same thing with my um, orange paper here. Snip that right up between those two pieces. Now, there is a little bit of a trick to getting this on there. Um, I can see I didn't come right up the middle, so I have to trim off that little edge there. There we go. And this first piece that's going to go on the top of our butterfly, we're going to adhere this way. But this one isn't going to do us any good because we want this turned around this way so we get our wings going. So this one has to be done backwards. So the bad side of your die cut to the bad side of your other die cut. Does that make sense? So this is the way I cut it apart, like this, and this is the way I'm going to have to adhere that second one so we can see the pattern on both wings. All right, so next I'm going to use my silicone mat and my dot runner um, because it um, is very forgiving when you have open weave on your die cuts. And I'm going to do that moving away from that antenna and use my fingers to take a little bit of any glue that's in between the webbing here and then put this butterfly down here in place on that cut, moving my antenna and the body right up against the edge. And there we go, we've got that done in there. And again, if you have any uh, loose glue in there in the webbing, you can just sort of erase it away. And there, that looks pretty good to me. All right, so this one we are going to do this way. So I'm going to put my glue on the right side of my die cut and on that antenna. You just want to be careful that you don't manhandle this too much so that it um, 
uh, doesn't tear. Okay, and then we're going to turn this around and mount this one on this side. And I find that if you start at the bottom down here and get that first piece right, it has kind of a little border all the way around it. And if I can anchor that bottom piece and get that border going up this end, the rest of this should work. There we go, just like that. And I don't have much glue in there, but I'm going to get rid of what I do. All right, then what I did was I used a couple of dimensionals and I cut my dimensionals, the big ones, in half so that I could use a half of a big dimensional. Um, if my butterfly is going to go together this way, then you just want to make sure, and in this case, I wanted the head to be um, together so that I could see the two antenna, and then you shift the top one to the right until you get the look you're looking for as far as being able to show both wings. Once I had that right, then I stick my um, dimensional down, pull off my paper. Ah, I moved it. Doggone it. Okay, so now I have to be more careful. Get my head right and get that set down. I think that's going to work. And then put that first one in place. Then take a second one and slip it in place on the bottom of the butterfly. And there we've got a dimensional butterfly whose wings are not together, but it does look like a butterfly that is flying the way I want it to. Okay, now then, what I have to do is just put this in place on my card. And since that is raised, I really don't need to add any other dimension to this. And I wanted my butterfly to look like he was getting ready to land on my flower here. So you just got to decide where you'd like to see that and then go ahead and add your, I'm using my dot runner because it's a little bit more forgiving than my seal. And I'm going to put snail on only this one piece because I don't want the other piece to stick down. So there we go. And then I'm just going to lay this little guy right in here, being careful on this end of the card and put that into place on my flower. There we go. Now then, for the inside of the card, um, we have a little stamping to do as well, but not with the black ink. So I used my markers, and the colors that coordinate are Highland Heather and Mossy Meadow. And we have this little hydrangea stamp um, that is in that stamp set that I showed you, Sweet, what's it called? Sweet Sampler, okay. And all I did was use my markers to color the hydrangea and just kind of drag it across the flower. Don't want to tear up my tip, so I'm doing this very much on the side of the marker and get that colored in pretty well. And the same thing with the little flower here. And then I used my Mossy Meadow to go over the leaf and stems, leaves and stems, 
and getting nice and up close to the flowers there and getting my ink down there. Okay, and I'm going to go just quickly over that again with the purple and get ready to put that in place right down here and I stamp that stem just a bit off the bottom. And these are red rubber so they don't require any additional cushion. And there we've got our image there. Now that looked awfully light to me. And so what I did was um, I used a blender pen on my image and I just used my blender pen to pick up a little bit of that ink and move it around my image. And I'm not getting a lot of ink, so I'm going to pick up just a touch of ink on my blender pen from my marker and color that little hydrangea in. And I think, given that my, that's my experience, I'm going to do that on this upper one as well and just move a little bit of color around on that hydrangea. You could use your ink, um, ink pad as well, and maybe that would be better, I don't know. But I want to get a little bit of that color spread around on that. Now, to clean this off, what you need is oh, a little piece of scratch paper, or this is just a little piece of scrap, and I mark it off on my piece of scratch paper until it runs clear and I make sure I've gotten all of my ink off of there. And sometimes it stains the end of the blender pen, but doesn't hurt it at all. So the next thing I'm going to do, and given that experience, I've got my mossy meadow and I'm going to pick up a little bit of that green on my blender pen and I'm going to do the same thing. See, that's moving that around really well now on those leaves. And sometimes just getting a, a wet blender pen on the ink that's already on there starts to move it around just a little bit. And I think that just adds a little bit to the inside of the card here, makes it look more right. Okay, so again, clean off my, my blender pen and recap that. And these blender pens last forever and you get three in a package I think it's $12. It's definitely worth having because it'll do this kind of thing also for um, watercolor uh, pencils. It'll move your, your scribbles around so that it looks nice and smooth. Okay, so that is done. So now I am going to take this piece and I cut this four and a quarter by five and three eighths. So it would give just the small amount of border. And then I cut this three and three quarters by five so that I would get more of that blue border around this. And then it's just a matter of adding some snail to the back of my card and centering that on this panel. And I'm going to get a nice big blue border around my inside. Now, if this card were to be for someone's birthday, it would be real easy. I just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way and to stamp a happy birthday on the inside would be perfect. So there we go. Uh, so you can add anything you'd like to the inside. All right, so next I need to be able to add this to my card. So I'm going to add my seal to the back of my card and put that into place 
on the inside and again if you're nervous about the small amount of border on this use Tombow so you can wiggle it around but there we go perfect all right then the other thing that I did was and I used them all up so I'm going to come in here and open a new package of pearls and pull those out okay I'm gonna take them off of that holder um, and I've got pearls put on my butterfly both at the top I tried to use a chalk uh, marker and I didn't end up liking the way it looked but if you look at a monarch butterfly it has little white um, polka dots if you will around the edge of its wings so I thought I would add just a few of these pearls at the top and the bottom of my butterfly and so I'm going to add four because I think this one ended up with not quite enough on it because I want to kind of round the bottom and the top of those wings so I'm putting them up the um, butterfly wings and then down around the bottom so there and if you look at a monarch butterfly that's what it looks like so then I thought well I'm going to add um, a few of these tiny ones there's a place that it looks like one goes on each of these pieces of hydrangea. I can't believe I ended up using exactly the same piece of paper, but I did. <laughs> and then I thought I would just dot one more, a little bit larger one, right up here by my sentiment. And then on the inside, I did use two of these tiny little pearls one on the center of that flower and one on the center of this little flower here i thought that added a little bit all right there we go that is my project for the day thank you so much for stopping by my youtube channel today i do so appreciate it and if you don't have already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Well, I'd love to be your demonstrator and or you could join my team. It's always a good time to join Stampin' Up! and start collecting those discounts on your orders. And um, my contact information is always listed below the video um, and be happy to talk to you about it uh, anytime. So uh, that's it. Um, let's see. Uh, my monthly prize draw is a $60 shopping spree on me out of either the annual catalog or the January to June mini catalog. Um, and how you get yourself in my drawing is to put an order of any size on my store, albedinger.stampinup.net. You can get to it through my blog, www.inkandingenuity.com. So uh, again, that's it for me. I will be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye.